Looking ahead to the to next week, Brad, quickly, what do we what do you forecast with the markets? Are we gonna get are we gonna get a rebound? Are we gonna see all time highs again with Bitcoin? Well, uh, you know, probably not. Yeah, we're still pretty far away from that 65,000 right now. Uh, I mean, anything can happen. Of course, it is Bitcoin. But, uh, you know, I mean, things may have turned a little more bearish this week. Uh, some of the technical charts signaling we may see a trip down into the 40s, the low 40s. Uh, but again, we've seen strong buying here in the $50,000 range in the high 40s. So, if we could go back, we'll probably trade up to about 53,000 analysts are saying. All right. Fair enough. All right. But Galen Skew has some data out saying that institutions are here and the CME Bitcoin futures contracts are now trading in backward dates. Backward dation. Maybe you can explain what that is, sure. and what that means for BTC price. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm um, I don't know about the second part, but the first part I can explain what it is. It's uh, it basically means that the uh, the contracts that are due to expire soonest are now priced at lower than what the expected spot price is of Bitcoin. Um, and as you can see, the basis, which is the gap between the futures contract and the uh, the spot underlying spot price, is you know lower than it has been uh, uh, in some time. Uh, so. Um, you know, I think that actually, you know, you might consider that like more evidence from what uh, Brad is saying, you know, bearish sentiment uh, visible in the futures market there. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we continue to see news rolling in of institutional interest in crypto and not just in um, Bitcoin, right, but in assets other than Bitcoin as well. Uh, a trio of, uh, of hedge funds looking at uh, potential DeFi funds uh, coming up in the in the. Um, uh, in the next couple of quarters, uh, as our reporter Ian, Al Ian Allison scooped this week. So if that proves true, uh, you know, it could be an interesting uh, couple of quarters ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the tech side, Christy, Taproot is giving it another go, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, it ended up um, at every, there are five epochs, five signaling periods that miners have in order to accept the Taproot speedy trial proposal. And last epoch, which ended at the end of the difficulty session on, I think it was Thursday, um, they only voted 40%. They need 90% in order to make it happen. So far, we're at 40%, but we have got four more tries. So no worries. We will probably get there if the predictions Everyone are true. Everyone wants that update for faster, cheaper Bitcoin. Okay, but we got to wrap up, but very quickly, UK courts are also allowing Craig Wright to serve 16 Bitcoin developers over 4 billion of stole, uh, serve uh, rather papers against 16 Bitcoin developers over 4 billion of stolen BTC. What does that mean, Christy? So there's this wallet, it's the infamous OneFeeX wallet that actually is uh, connected to the Mt. Gox hack. Funds from the hack have been traced to this wallet and his company, uh, Tulip Trading Company, uh, says it's their wallet. I don't know why they would admit it, but okay. And they have now said that they want those Bitcoins. They want access to that wallet. So the weird thing about this case is that Wright is asking developers to deploy code, quote unquote, that will allow him to regain control of the keys to the Bitcoin in that wallet. And that's just not really how Bitcoin works. And considering Wright claims to be Satoshi, you'd think he'd know that. But um, so what it would do is it involves creating a forked coin, which then is not really Bitcoin. It would have to be like a, a new Bitcoin, I guess. And you have to have nodes agree and miners mine it and people agree, yes, this is it. And they are going to buy and sell it. And I don't see that happening. 